Hello, here I'm going to be reviewing and testing the Cumin multifunction transistor checker, that the picture you see to your right. It has some interesting features, in particular this very nice TFT color display, which is nice to look at and superior in that respect to the MK168 that I used in other videos. But there are a few problems with it that I will be covering. And these evolve around, um, it does not reliably test LEDs. It tests a few, some of them it won't do as well as the MK168. Um, there's a glitch between the switches. If you power it on to test, the screen lights up, but it doesn't do anything. You have to switch it off and immediately switches on, and then it works. And then there's a big headache with this zero infer insertion force socket that we shall describe next. Um, it also doesn't have any plugs that you can plug in some cables uh, to check larger components such as TO3 transistors. I had to make an adapter. In fact, I made an adapter, as you'll see in the video, to replace this. Here's another look at it. Uh, it checks transistors, diodes, dual diodes, MOSFETs, SCRs, resistors, inductors, capacitors, and capacitor ESR, which will also be discussed in this. The other, yeah, I think the MK168 didn't do ESR, but this does. One of the biggest complaints at Amazon was this socket problem. This is not the zip. The uh, zip socket is not soldered in. It just plugs in. And it rocks around. You can read the review over here. The device works fine, except this is unstable, and that's why I had to end up making my little adapter. So anyway, on to the actual video on how to use it. You're looking at the Kuman transistor checker. Um, it's supposed to identify transistors, diodes, dual diodes, MOSFETs, SCRs, resistors, inductors, capacitor, and capacitor ESR. I bought this uh, particular model off of Amazon, and I'll show you around what it does, its strengths and weaknesses. First problem you run into is when you get it out of the box, this is not soldered to the board. You just merely pop it into this socket. But after you've done it a few times, your first problem is it's loose. That's been the biggest frustration I've had with it, is that's not really... A very good idea. The pins really are not long enough, the pins are not long enough, or or the correct gauge to really seat in there. What I did was build my own version that will plug into it. Let's look a little bit closer at this device. You should be able to see the numbering here. 321, 321, 321, 321, you have to uh, go by those numbers. You're going to use one, two, three to test out your component. So one, one, two, three here is the same as one, two, three there, and so forth. What I did to get around the socket problem here is mine. I use this on other things, and I'm going to plug this in so that this right here is three, two, one, three. Let me plug that in. There we go. Here is this. Let's check a component. Okay, say I don't even know what it is. I'm just going to drop it in there. Oops. Open it up. That helps. 
I'm going to drop the component in there. And I'm going to zoom in a bit on the screen so you can see what it does. I think that's a MOSFET, but we'll find out in a minute. You'll press test. You should see the light come on, that little smiley face, that little testing. Okay, it's a P-channel MOSFET. If you look at it as uh, 3, 2, 1, of course that's correct, gate, drain, source. Its turn-on voltage, VT, is 4.4 volts, and it has a capacitance of about, oh, I don't know, 1 nanofarad. At any rate, you also have a little bit of time here before it turns off, and you can go ahead and turn it off. Let's try another component. This is an in-channel MOSFET. You can see it right there. A lot of times when you've used it a few times, you'll cut it on, cut it off, and then cut it on again. And that resets the circuit. Don't know why it does that. This is an in-channel MOSFET. Of course, it's 1, 2, 3 is gate source drain. I know that's correct because I'm familiar with the part. Gives you the drawing. It switches on at 3.7 volts. It also has a little reference here to tell you the battery's okay and you're going down into a countdown before it turns off. Let's try an electrolytic capacitor. This one is rated at, and I'm going to put it in 2 and 3. There's the capacitor. I know it's a 4.3 microfarad. Let's see what it does. Let's see how it does a capacitor. It's 4700 NF, which is 4.7 microfarads. It has an ESR rating of 2.2 .2 ohms. And it has a loss or a slight leakage. All these capacitors have some form of leakage at 1%. And this tells you it's connected to 2 and 3. Battery is still okay. Let's turn it off. Here is going to be another electrolytic capacitor. Even if the numbers have rubbed off, you can use this to tell where the uh, value is and the polarity. It's about 100 microfarads, which is what it says on it. This says it's 99.4 microfarads, very close, an ESR of 1.5 ohms, and a, and a leakage of about 3.1%, or B-loss as they call it. And it's connected across 2 and 3. You don't have to turn it off every time you put a new component in to check it. This time I'm just going to do a, a plain old diode. Okay, it has a reverse leakage of 10 nanoamps, very small. 
it has a forward conducting voltage of 817 millivolts and a capacitance when reverse bias of 26 picofarads. And so forth. There are some things that it will not check. It will not check triax and it will not check uh, LEDs. It will check SCRs just fine. And so that's a view of this little transistor checker. Uh, one of the other things I'll have to make an adapter to test these TO3 transistors because it doesn't fit the socket obviously. I'll have to make a little clip adapter, something like this. It does a, a very good job on a lot of values. Like I said, the only weak point was this, but I got by that fairly easy because this plugs into my other transistor checker. And so this is notable for a couple of issues. It tells you where the switch on voltage for MOSFET transistors. That's important to know because if you're trying to switch something on with 5 volts it's a good idea to know that hey it tells you where the switch on voltage is. Let's do this one and see what it is. I'll show you that again. Again this is a MOSFET so if I'm driving the MOSFET with 5 volts, I need to know it will turn on. This says it will turn on at 4.4 volts. Tells you where the pins are, gate, source, drain, and so forth. It's a um, P-channel MOSFET. And uh, actually my tests show, which you'll see in another video, I'll show you how to construct the circuit is that most of these MOSFETs will switch on at about 4 volts and that's what this is saying. It's saying 4.4. So I'll put the information on the website where to find this if you're interested in one. If I had to rate it from 0 to 5 with 5 being best and 0 being a dud, I'd give it about a four and a half, four and a, four, four and a half. I'd just like to have seen a little better interface on it. So, this is the Kuman transistor checker. Maybe you'll find this a little bit useful down the road somewhere. Alright, thanks for listening.